Good evening. I'd like to open the Deerfield Planning Board meeting November 19th, 2018 at 7.10 in the municipal offices. Our agenda is uh, to look at any minutes we have from previous meetings, review mail, take some public comment, and then we have a uh, continuation of a public hearing for a site plan review of a solar installation project on Set Right Road, submitted by SWCA on behalf of Hexagon, Hexagon Energy. Location, location is map 142, lots 40 and uh, lots 20 and 22. And then uh, we'll take up any business not reasonably anticipated 48 hours prior to the posting of this meeting. We'll set a date for the next meeting and adjourn. Any comments on the agenda? Additions? No. no. Subtractions? Uh, do we have any minutes? No. Minutes for review. All right. Then I'd like to actually add maybe to the um, other businesses just to give a, get a summary of the last meeting of last week's. I got, I've got my notes from the last All meeting. All right. So we'll just talk about that. And um, I'd also say let's just set, set our agenda for the next meeting, which is um, I think scheduled for December 10th. So. All right, any mail? I didn't. Is that uh, 7 John? 710, we opened. Is that what you have? No. Oh. Nope. He said that we have the meeting, meeting on the 10th, 10th. December. Is that at 7 o'clock? Oh, December yes. 10th at 7 o'clock, yes. Yes. And then um, we usually leave a minute or two. If anybody in the public has a comment now that on, on anything that's not on the agenda, this would be a time to. Any questions, comments about anything that's not on the agenda? Great. Then we'll go to the next thing, which is to open the... Uh, continue. The continued public hearing. So I just want to get the... See if I can find that announcement. Actually, it's in, it should be in the box. Do we have anything? All right, I'd like to open the public hearing uh, that's been continued from uh, November 8th. And it is, um, it's a public hearing pursuant to sections 5400 and 2200 of the Deerfield uh, Zoning Bylaws to review plans, including site plan and stormwater. Special permit submitted by SWCA Environmental Consultants on behalf of Hexagon, Hexagon Energy LLC for the development of property along Set Right Road um, for a uh, 2.0 megawatt AC solar array on properties currently owned and farmed by Chester Ostowski. Copies of the site plan have been available uh, during town uh, for review at town offices during regular business hours. Any person interested or wishing to be heard should appear at a time and place designated. So we've had a few meetings on this already. Um, so what I'd like to do is continue. Um, and we did get a letter from, so we've hired two technical reviewers for the, to help the town on this. One is an uh, engineer. And this is the letter that she submitted. The other is uh, Pat Smith from the Council of Governments, who's not able to be here tonight, but she did send a letter. And I will, unfortunately, we didn't get to get it in time to print it or anything, but I'll, I'll read some comments from that. Um, will I find that on my computer? Will yeah, I she sent an email about okay. a half, just like a half hour ago. Right. I, I can put that in the minutes. Yeah. 
So there were three things that our um, civil engineer uh, reviewer wanted to follow up on, and that is confirmation that the site area is in fact under 10 acres, which makes it a large solar array. The other is to look at the requirements of, of the road improvements for the surface of the set right road. Uh, and the other is to confirm the runoff characteristics of the solar installment. So um, our consultant, Sarah Campbell, uh, got, got uh, verbal assurance that this is a 9.95 acre project, so we just want to verify that tonight. We were hoping to hear from our highway superintendent. I'm not sure. I, I did not. I, I did. Okay, good. So you can say something about that. And then regarding the runoff characteristics, she feels comfortable that everything is uh, in order there is, is the fact that um, with the grasses uh, that they're using, uh, what it says here is that uh, the solar panels themselves do not have a significant impact on volumes of runoff, peak rates of runoff, or time of that peak runoff. Uh, using the ground cover on the panels, as the applicant did in the analysis, was shown to adequately estimate the post-development runoff characteristics. So those are the things. So the other question we had is, do we have new plans? Because we've made lots of comments, so I guess if you guys could just, uh, the applicants just again introduce yourself and tell us what changes we've had since the last uh, meeting. Sure. I'm Meredith Savage with SWCA and representing um, on behalf of Hexagon Energy and Scott Reamer here is with Hexagon. And I just handed in, I think you just put it off to the side there, a memo um, that answered. That's not it. Do you have it? Oh, yeah, right here. Yes. There is um, a memo that addresses um, the comments that were emailed uh, to us. And number one, um, the calculation of the solar array is indeed 9.95. We checked it. It's, it's checked um, through the CAD drawing system, so it's literally a polygon. And indeed, um, as shown on uh, sheet three, Here, as shown on sheet three, it is the area that is within the fence line here. And it is 9.95 acres. And then in the memo, I make the note that the confusion may have stemmed from the fact that the area with So just to, sorry to, not, sorry not to yeah. cut you off, but so we have plans. Are we looking at old plans? That's what I, that was my question. Do we have a set of new plans? This Where one's dated 717. Yeah. And that doesn't say 9.95. And on three on this one, we don't have that either. Did I not bring in a set of plans? Someone, no, 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 no. You all do have the most recent set. Oh, You have okay. your revision right. date revision right date here. here. Okay, 11 -8. Yes, there, and so date. you had those... Yep. The plans that you okay. received um, at the last hearing were the updated plans, and they have everything on it that was requested, and, um, and it was all here, and I can go through that, but that's item number five. Okay, good. Yeah. Okay, that's what it was. 11.5, yeah, 11.9. So that's the difference, and we have to show both on, on the plans. Okay, so number two, um, it was a request, written confirmation for the town of Deerfield regarding Set Right Road. And we tried multiple times. We know this is an incredibly busy time for the town superintendent, but we have um, tried multiple times via email and uh, voice messages to get in contact with him. And we weren't able to. And so um, in the memo, I just note that um, the, your, your town bylaws do say that if you don't get a response, it's considered not an objection. That being said, we would expect 
that a simple condition, which I believe in the second document that you got um, uh, from, uh, uh, yes, from Pat. Yeah. And, and of course, in addition to that, obviously everything, I mean, the roads get signed off by the superintendent. And so mm -hmm. if it is not, it's, it's in um, Hexagon's best interest to work with the superintendent to make sure that they are constructed right. accordingly. And then the third area um, was with regards to clearing up whether the site as shown in location two was actually correct, and it was, and Scott can address that, and you have that there as well yeah, in your little package. Turns out, shows, you can see two trees visible, calling this one the set right road tree, and this one the field tree. For all the same. Yeah. Here. Well, no, you can. Yeah, you can leave it up there. We want people on, um, on TV to see it too, I guess. But shows that using photo imagery, the only trees visible in the field is this one here in the corner, which is the field tree. This one, which is the separate road tree. So this encapsulates the whole the whole project area. It, it's a wide angle lens that we used to to take the picture to be able to show everything. So happy to leave this copy here. All right, thanks. All right, good. Okay. And then there was a question uh, regarding the estimated number of trucks during construction, and um, our engineer provided a figure that, they, that he estimated that it would be less than 75 trucks. And what I did was I went back into some of um, other solar projects that SWCA has worked on, and for a 4.4 megawatt project that's going into West Hampton, um, the estimate there was uh, and was uh, was 54 large truck deliveries over a three to four month period, and then you can see that it's broken down 33 truckloads of panels, uh, 12 of racking. So that just gives you an idea, and that's for a project that's not quite two times the size of this one. So. Yeah, uh, right, it is more, right, okay, so it's over two times the size. So you can expect that the number of trucks would be um, considerably less than the 75 figure that we just threw out, It'll and likely be less than 50. And that's over a three-month period, and it's um, three to four with hours of operation. Yeah. Yes. And then finally, um, the, regarding the updated plans, it, it does throw people off to read July 17th, but we have down on the cover page, you typically always keep the original date that was submitted um, when, the, when the permit was first submitted, and then the revisions are shown in the block here, mm -hmm. and the latest is 1108, and that's these plans. And uh, some of the um, information that was requested was that the plans clearly show fencing. And on, walk you uh, through them on sheet 2.1, the fence is clearly shown in this sort of uh, a line with little dots on it. So the fence line of the project is clearly shown. Um, the undergrounding of utilities, there is a line that says E here, and that is the um, utility line, and it is all underground. And it states on the plans, underground electric wire, which takes it out to the interconnection point on set right. And it asks for screening placement, and we show screening here um, to the north, 
and to the west. Areas where, uh, and then again here along the west property line. The Sentry Road would be up oh, here. Sheet three point zero provides details on the pollinator mix. It's a grass and forb mix. Um, pollinator species, and it's provided right here, pollinator wild, wildflower seed mix. Um, and it also provides uh, the description of the plants, the species that will go in for the screening, gives the size, their container plants, approximately 290. Um, you have a screening diagram that shows that plants are set 10 feet on center, but the lines are staggered, so they are five feet apart. And that is, um, we do have the, uh, the basic um, showing how the access road, the entrance to the access road, and um, just the basic information on that, of the, the cross sections. And again, uh, the final, um, Access. I mean, the, the details are typically worked out with the superintendent. So, we did have all of this at the last um, hearing, and hopefully we have now cleared up the, the vision. I did, what I didn't get to show at the last hearing is this page. I can leave it up here for a second uh, for the viewing audience to see, and then I can bring it. Oh, you've got it right there, yeah, of we'll course. Yeah, we'll and what it shows is, one, the tre tremendous distance. It's um, just under a quarter mile at 1,100 feet from Set Right Road to um, where the screening will be. And um, a little bit further on than is the start of the panels. As you can see, the ground is, the topography is slightly domed, and the panels are actually set down slope so that the line of sight from Set Right Road will come skim across the top of the domed area topographically and obviously keep going, and the panels will be well below that line of sight. Thank you. You're welcome, our there. That, unless there's anything you'd like to add, Scott. Um, All right. So if I can go through um, some of our so our administrative technical assistance, Pat Smith's letter. She goes through the list of documents that she reviewed, which include the special permit application. The site plans, um, dated the three different, three or four different ones, the special permit application, two letters from our Sarah Campbell, feedback from the town boards. Um, we, we do need the one from the DPW superintendent. And there's a letter from Dan Conlon, which is in the uh, warm color apiaries, which I read last time about that this, the grasses are good for, for bees, pollinators. Um, and this does fit into a large solar under our current standards. One thing we have to fix, actually, just to remind everybody, is that we said it's a two megawatts or less is large. Two to six is extra large. But we didn't say whether that's AC or DC. And there's a difference. Imagine that. So basically, we're giving whatever applicants come until we correct this, we're giving you whichever, you know, the more lenient one. In this case, it's actually, uh, is D it's AC. AC is two megawatts. If you did, if this was DC, it would be over two megawatts. But we'll call it two megawatts uh, AC. Um, all right. 
All right, so da, 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 soils. All right. So the review process, the public hearing was opened back in August, August 20th at 7 o'clock, continued September 17th, continued to October 29th. That meeting was canceled, continued to November 8th, and then continued till, till tonight. We hired the two consultants at the applicants. The applicants paid for both of them. Um, all right, where's her issues here? All right, so stormwater drainage, including the means of ultimate disposal and calculations in compliance with the town's stormwater bylaw, being chapter 155 of Deerfield current general bylaws, and uh, that, that was met. And then we have the reports from Sarah Campbell saying that the, the drainage is okay. Um, existing trees, 10 inches caliper or better, and existing tree slash shrub masses, proposed planting, landscape, and screening, that that's been met. It's now an agricultural field, so that quite the, it seems like the grasses and the other uh, ground cover is actually going to be better, more absorbent than what's there now. Operations and maintenance plan is partially met. We do need some more. Um, that was in your original Appendix G of the special permit application. Uh, does not address roadway maintenance or specific requirements for ongoing maintenance of the pollinator plants under the arrays. We'll be happy. That's one of the conditions that she proposed. Yeah. So that would be something that we just still would need is the full operations and maintenance plan. Insurance, the project applicant shall provide proof of liability insurance in an amount sufficient to cover loss or damage to persons and structures occasioned by the use or failure of the solar electric installation. That's met. See Appendix H. Um, financial surety. Um, Partially met, see Appendix I of the Special Permit Application Materials dated July 2018, which includes a decommissioning estimate for the cost of removal of the solar installation. Applicants shall negotiate a decommissioning plan, that's not finished yet, and execute a form of financial surety for the town of Deerfield to, that meets the requirements of the planning board. So that's, we did that with the other one too, about uh, mm -hmm. if, if they just walked away, that we would have money to decommission it if necessary. So I think that's the amount that we need is what we need to figure out, right? Is it in there? And then the utility notification that's met, see Appendix J of the special permit, that um, evidence has been given that the utility company that operates the electrical grid, uh, that they'll install an interconnected uh, customer owned generator. All right. All right, so other conditions are minimize visual impacts through proper lighting, landscaping, screening. So that's um, met with the screening. Minimize environmental impacts by avoiding land clearing, fragmentation of open space, preserving natural habitat, limiting the use of or providing for containment of hazardous materials by satisfying applicable no no noise standards. That's been met. Minimize safety impacts. That's been met. Ensure compliance with all applicable local, state, and federal regulations, codes, bylaws, rules, and standards. She says partially met, but doesn't explain why. I think she provides a just much more detailed statement in the um, recommended conditions. Yeah. That explicitly says we will meet with all of those. And we may have forgotten to include a paragraph that, that states Maybe that. that's that you need to just include it. And then, so that was. Um, we do have that on page eight. Um, it says ensure compliance with all applicable local, state, federal statutes, regulations, codes, bylaws, rules, and standards. And it says this solar project will comply 
with all the applicable local, local, state, federal requirements, including the Massachusetts Wetland Protection mm. Act and its regulations. And one of the conditions that was set is that um, the applicant must adhere to the permit as provided, meaning this, the narrative. Yeah. That's, that's, and would put that would put that in any condition. All right, and then the um, special permit. Uh, one, two, three, four things we look at. The use is in harmony with the purpose and intent of the section 3800. That's met. The use will be cited, designed, and operated in a manner that appropriately addresses the impacts to the neighborhood and the community including visual impacts, environmental impacts, and impacts to public health, safety, and welfare. It's met. No nuisance is expected to be, to be created by the use. That's met. And adequate and appropriate facilities will be provided for the proper operation of the solar installation. Partially met, again, that's the road I think we're talking about. Setback requirements because of the um, Putting the two lots together, now it doesn't have to have a setback issue, so that's now met dimensional requirements. Lighting, no lighting problems. Signage, no signage problems. Utility connections, that's already taken care of. Roads, so that's the partially met one that we just, that might be a condition. Um, so that's all about the road. Control of vegetation, vegetation is met. Hazardous materials is met, there's no hazardous materials. Noise, that's been met, there's no noise. Has a sound rating of 60 decibels. Or landscape, <coughs> landscaping and screening has been met. Safety standards, emergency standards, emergency services, that's met. Um, the applicant will work with local emergency services in developing emergency response plan and providing the fire Fire Chief, Highway Superintendent, and Emergency Management Director with any required information. So that's in the, it's in there. Access, the solar array will be fenced with seven, seven foot high security fence, or six? It's uh, all told it will be, the top of it will be at seven feet. It's typically six and a half feet and it's raised off the ground six inches. All right. And that also, um, land clearing, soil erosion, and habitat impacts, that's met, determined that, again, this is better for wildlife than what's there now. Um, so then the monitoring, maintenance, and reporting. So these are partially met, and that gets back to the maintenance and op uh, operations and maintenance plan. Uh, um, and then the annual reporting. Um, that we would like the planning board to get. Uh, actually, during um, construction, we get, I forget, monthly or we get more plans, whatever you're sending to the wetlands, whatever the CONCOM. Yes. And the CONCOM, are, they wanted certain things, right? The CONCOM, we're completely outside of any jurisdiction of the CONCOM. So oh, right. They don't have, All right. They have any sort of because for the thing up in the quarry, I was getting like weekly or bi-weekly, remember those reports? It was, uh, because that was a CONCOM thing. But um, yeah. So we should just get some reports on the, as the progress is going. All right, and then decommissioning. All right. That traffic flow is fine. Adequacy of utilities and public service met. Neighborhood character and social structures seems okay. Impact on the natural environment. So now this gets into more same stuff. Uh, fiscal impact, fine. Uh, I don't know. Now we get it. It's such a repeat itself because it's site plan review and special permit. Some of them are the same. Fees. There was still maybe a question about fees. Did you talk to anybody about that? I didn't, but once again, I kind of fall back on Pat, but she spelled out the, uh, the fee structure, and it, it's acceptable. I think it, you know, we pay, I think, only 350 in total for everything. I don't remember exactly how it went up, but it 
it's somewhere around the, another 3,000, maybe 5,000, so something like that. She spells it out. Because we, max, we, uh, we have the thing by first 1,000 square feet, but um, then it maxes out at $3,000. So that's what this would do. With the additional $200, it makes a total of 3200 and we're saying by by this review is calculating the total amount of fees due for this project is six thousand six hundred. Um, Did that add in the, the peer review peer stuff review or not? Stuff. Peer review stuff we've already. No, that was different. Okay. Although we're not seeing the bill from Sarah yet, so. You know what it is? It's the special permit fee and then the site plan review fee. So we have, is it 3,000 for each of them? Oh, it can't be. So these remaining balance of 6,250. All right, well, that would be a condition is just to make sure we gotta, we gotta straighten this out. Um, do you know why it comes out to 6,000? Is that from Pat? Yeah. So I don't know if she's saying that in our bylaws, maybe we do say that a special permit is 3,000 and site plan review is 3,000. But if we're doing them together, that right. doesn't necessarily right. make sense. And I think that the $3,000 amount is the disturbed land fee, right. not the actual permit fee. So right, the permit fee is just the, the 200 or 250 plus, right. yeah. All right, so I'll check on that if that's, that seems um, too high. Yeah. But if, in fact, if that's what our bylaws say, we got to, we might have to make some revision to that. If, yeah, and we have the right to adjust that if we yeah. feel we should. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> well, what was at the end of that page? Uh, Storm miner. Okay. All right. So then it starts repeating itself. All right, and then she did uh, prepare a um, motion. Yeah, a motion, and then and then. Uh, Is it one or two proposed conditions? Um, site plan review, special permit, stormwater permit, all in one. Okay. Because they're all they yeah, they end up being the same things. So. Yeah. All right. All right. So, do you have any other questions or? Uh, the only other It's with the Board of Assessors or yes. Select Board? Initially, or, to get the terms, it's with the board of, board of Assessors and then the Select Board will approve it. To finalize it, yeah. yeah. All right, I'd like to, unless planning board members have anything at this point, I'll open it up to the public. Mm -hmm. Good. Does anybody uh, have anything? We've had several meetings on this and I think we've addressed a lot of the issues that have been raised, but if anybody has anything else at this point, this would be the time to just talk. If you could just sure. say your name, thanks. David Decision, 33 Set Right Road. What's uh, that? Mr. Wade, Sorry. Uh, David Decision, 33 Set Right Road. Um, Chairman Wade, I, I, I wasn't quite sure when I should address this, but uh, I probably should have done it uh, ahead of time. Uh, I apologize for the inconvenience to the board, but uh, I had brought this up before and it hasn't been acted on by the board. Uh, prior to the first scheduled meeting regarding this special permit application in August 2018, Mr. Camosa uh, was heard making public comments in support of granting of this special permit. His comments were so disconcerting that while I was not part of the conversation, I felt compelled to comment that I hoped his opinion was not shared by members of the planning board uh, because uh, to do so, um, the, uh, the process would be uh, useless and simply an exercise in futility. While I recognized Mr. Camosa as a select board member, I did not realize that he was a voting member of the planning board and was appalled when I realized that he would be part of the evaluation process and deliberation of this application in light of his very vocal and enthusiastic support of this project prior to any formal proceedings commenced in accordance with the town bylaws. 
by speaking out in favor of this project prior to the start of any formal hearing, let alone completion of the public hearing, and prior to the full review of the application, he has created a reasonable and credible perception of impropriety as a sitting member of this board, sitting and voting member of this board. His continued involvement with the board also puts him in a position to advance his publicly stated position and uh, has the distinct possibility of tainting the process uh, in its totality, including the ability of this board uh, to, um, to remain uh, impartial. While Mr. Camosa does not lose his ability um, as a private citizen simply because of his position on the planning board, once he exercises his right to speak out as a private citizen, I would suggest he forfeits his right to continue as a planning board member uh, uh, with any involvement in this special permit application. His impartiality is compromised, and he, his continued involvement with these proceedings could call into question any future decision made by the planning board. Mr. Camosa should immediately recuse himself and take no active role in the remainder of these proceedings. Mr. Wade is chairman. If he, doesn't, if he fails to recuse himself, you should call for his recusal as a result of these events. His continued involvement is inappropriate and query whether his substantial involvement to this point has already polluted the process to such a degree that impartiality of the remaining board members has been compromised. I have no reason to believe that this has happened, but it still raises again, if not the real, at least the perception of impropriety. Our courts have repeatedly um, held that when there is a credible allegation of improper participation by a member of a board, what needs to be avoided is suspicion or suggestion of actions motivated by personal or private interests. Mr. Camosta needs to recuse himself now. His continued uh, participation in this application and the ultimate decision is inappropriate. He, it, um, the longer it goes on, the greater chance his influence has and stated support of this project to negatively impact each member's impartiality ultimately could call into question any decision made by the board, and I believe it would serve as a legitimate appellate issue. So I, I want to know how that's going to be addressed, because this is the second time now that I brought it up and the board still hasn't, hasn't really addressed it. And it's a real problem. Well, thank you. If, if I so, could address that, John. Yeah, but I just, wanted, okay. I just wanted to say thank you. And you, you did bring it up before, and we did, you know, we took it under advisement as, as much as we do. Just so you know, we hire, the reason why we have peer reviewers is to, just to, make sure that, you know, we go, there's always some, you know, that we're all people on the board, but we try to look at the facts. So we have uh, independent reviewers, both administratively and um, on the engineering side of it. Um, but, so, but I'm not, I'm not, no, I'm, I, I hear your thing, and I'll let, I'll let Mr. Camosa, you know, ad, ad, you know, do what he thinks is right, but I just wanted you to know that, that we try to be impartial, and, and we get third-party reviewers to, to help us also. And, and I think that so. that's part of the, the, obviously it's part of the town bylaws to look at this from two perspectives. Number one is the project itself and whether it meets the requirements and the stated criteria. What I'm concerned about is the analysis under section 5320 that talks about the benefit to the neighborhood versus the benefit to the project as a whole to the community. That's where the impartiality is lost because those criteria still have to be weighed for this project to go forward as you all know. Yeah. Uh, the stated impartiality doesn't go to the review of the project itself and the nuts and bolts and the erecting of, of any structures. It goes to the weighing and the analysis of the criteria under section 5320. And that's where the impartiality is even, is even more important and of paramount concern. You wanna say anything? Sure. Um, I, I, I'm, I can't speak to why you think that I am not being impartial. The comments that you heard, and I remember that evening, I was speaking to old friends of mine, the Lenarziks. Um, I built a new home on Set Right Road myself in 1985. And Karen asked me, she says, can you please stop this? And the comments that you heard, which I said, I can't stop this. I have to listen to everything go forward. If these people follow our bylaws, that's probably, you know, what will happen. It's not, I was not impartial. I did not speak in favor or against it. I just was replying to Karen saying that I can't stop this. If the, the applicants meet all the requirements of our bylaw, it more than likely would go forward. Okay. That's not what I recall hearing, but I, again, I brought it up for the, uh, for the record just to, to yep. preserve any, any appellate issue. Okay. Thank you. All right, so um, can, can you just put that in the minutes, Paul, that this issue was brought up? Okay, I'm gonna need to get some. There, there was a... Uh, resident who questioned the 
whether KIP was is, is impartial or not. I think it's a good summary. Anybody else? So we have to. Do you want to say something? Yes. Okay. I didn't. Okay. Uh, Tony Martino, 39 Set Right Road. Uh, just on the uh, the um, blocking issues here, um, he just said that um, it's. I believe we referred to it as a dome. However, there is no dome at, at the end of Set Right Road. It looks right down. There's no picture of it here, but it looks right down. Um, and from what I can see in the plans here, um, we're about 222 feet at the project site. About 240 feet um, is the nearest one here on Set Right Road, and it's probably another five feet, but we'll go with 240. So right off the bat, you're 18 feet above um, the, uh, the project itself. Everybody follow me so far? Oh, and no. the road is? Yes. Okay. okay. Just, just okay. going by uh, what was presented in the, uh, in the plants. Uh, 222 feet at this point, 240 feet up on Set Right Road, or close to Set Right Road, and then it's a little higher. So at least, uh, at least a distance of 18 feet that you're already above it. So you're looking down onto the project before you even get going. And then you're gonna put, I believe, four to six foot plants um, in front of it that grow a foot to a foot and a half a year. Um, so it's gonna be a significant amount of time before these block any portion of the project. <coughs> um, and it's just, the, the whole time we've been saying that nobody's gonna see this and it's just, it's, it's inaccurate. Just, I'm just going by what's in the book. Okay. I'm not sure anybody said that no one's ever going to see this. That, that I... uh, it's going to be blocked from view is what, during the very first meeting. So it was going to be blocked from view. That they were going to plant trees, whatever it would take to block it. Yeah. And now we're at four to six foot trees. They grow a foot a year. So if you take a six foot tree, um, it's going to be at least five years. I'm doing some rough math here, but... Um, you get up to about 15 feet then, but you're still 18 feet above the project. So if a tree grows to 15 feet, you're still three feet short. Okay. Does that make sense or am I reading it wrong? I'm not going to argue with your measurements. I'm just okay. saying I'm not uh, sure anybody said you're not going to see it. You're going to see the, right. the tops of the panels. You're, you're going to see gonna, the you're trees, gonna... or you're going to, you know, there's something out there. Yeah. There yeah. was some question around exactly how the visual impact would be. That, mm -hmm. that was why, at a significant expense, we, we did go out in the field and take these photos and yeah. place the, uh, the array so that we can actually know what the visual impact is. And I don't know if we said you won't ever see it, but I do believe that the impact will be very, very minimal. And then once those trees do get mature, you, you won't be seeing it. You see the trees, so, so you see something out there. Yeah. Well, you you're gonna see the top of a tree, and then, yeah. <laughs> and then all these panels beyond it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Okay. Thank you. So at this point, we got to, um, unless anybody else has anything to, to add, we got to decide whether we want to. Uh, Close the public hearing. Do you have something else to add? Or? No, I was just bringing it up to the uh, existing conditions plan, which is where you can see all the, the topographical features. Oh, hi. Hi, James Wakus, 32 Sawmill Plain Road. Uh, some of the concerns I have, we've brought up before and been over it, but uh, especially under 5300, 
when it says uh, neighborhood characteristics and social structures. Doesn't meet that requirement at all. Drastically changes the neighborhood forever, for the next 20 years. All I'm saying is that there's, there's better options. I understand what you're gonna do, but would it be different if we were sitting here voting on seven or eight farms for special permits? Because I understand there's a lot of acreage out there and wants to prevent us from covering the entire field. It's the second largest tillable piece of land in the town of Deerfield. You know, I'm concerned that it's a special permit, but I'm also concerned that it's setting the precedent moving forward. That we're gonna cover, if you look at this field from the photographs, we're gonna cover all of it. You know, if you issue one, how do you not issue another? Or another, or another, or another? I just think that that is not in the characteristic of this community in the town that we moved into. I, one of our neighbors who came over who's elderly, when we looked at the drawings that you provided your company, those are your numbers. When you look at them and you know, when you're not sitting there, when you're sitting where we are and we look at them, her exact words were, I won't live long enough for the trees to grow tall enough to change the view. We're all gonna look at them when you drive down the road, when you walk down the road. I get it, solar's good, but there's better options. Put them on the dump where you're never gonna use that land again. Put them on top of Pelican, do something. But this is tillable farmland that we need to have to feed our children's children in the future. I just wanna go on record stating that I really think that you need to think about what you're doing by covering up good soil. But thank you. Thanks. Ann Maria Strowski, 194 Conway Road. Just a couple of things to make sure that we understand. We own 50 acres out on that property. Only 10 acres are going to be used. So that means 40 acres are still in agriculture. I'd like to remind people that don't know about that property in the plains, Mr. Bowman spent $1,100,000 on three pieces of property in the plains. He's not a farmer, he doesn't live locally, he lives in New York. The property right across from the neighbors is perked with a beautiful view on a paved road. He owns 17 acres there. When and if he develops that property, their view is gone anyway. Now the other properties that he owns in the plains, uh, he's the largest landowner out there by the way, all have access to two, at least two roads, Set Right Road on one and Plain Road on the other, and Set Right Road and Sawmill Plain on the other. To me, that spells, at some point, development. And there goes all of that property that we're still trying to keep our acreage in farmland. And the other thing that I would bring up, we, we love the trees and everything, but I also realize they want trees tall enough to block it. It's a solar array. It depends on sun. Trees are beautiful. They provide habitat, natural resources, but they also provide shade. You can't shade a solar array and make it worthwhile. Thank you. Comment? Uh, I was just going to say, I, I appreciate what you had to say, but we're not going on speculation on what's going to be the future. We're asking you to look at a snapshot of time. I think he was. I think, uh, I think you were speculating about panels going over the whole area, and that's what, that's what you were speculating about. So. I did. It's okay, just so you see that. It's a two way street. Mm -hmm. Is there any other new information from anybody? All right. So seeing no new information, I'd like to close the public hearing for the uh, proposed solar installation at Set Right Road. So at this point, the um, Deerfield Planning Board has heard a lot, has had our two technical review people um, help us with this, 
and it's uh, we'll we'll deliberate and then uh, make a decision. So, any questions, comments, motions from planning board members? Well, I, I would just like to say that you know I've, I've watched the Ostrowskis for many years, and I've often asked myself why Chet hasn't just sold his property off like a lot of. Um, people that have inherited property, and he hasn't. He's, he's always maintained and kept his land. And to me, solar is probably the best way to preserve farmland because this will be locked up for 20 plus years, 20 to 30 years with panels. And if that land is ever needed for food production, it's very easily recovered, whereas once it's developed with homes or buildings, that's not the case. Um, if s solar gives a family an option to hold on to their property, help pay the taxes, et cetera, et cetera, I don't see an issue with that. That's what I got to say. Thanks. Um, as far as you know, we have to clear up the um, the issue with the permit fees and stuff like that. But as far as the road goes, I spoke with Kevin before, but I spoke with him again today, mm. and um, he said that you know the road in that area they have no problem with. If the applicants put more gravel over, it, if they wanted to widen it a little bit, he didn't have a problem with it, and that. Um, he, he currently doesn't go and plow that section, but it was only a little bit more. He's not saying that he would do it, but uh, you know he can plow up to that and just not plow it to block the road. And then the applicant can continue it on from there. So that, that's my understanding is that the only the major thing is that if the town would only take care of it if it was in good shape. Right. And they would have to put it in good shape. If it's not in good shape, the town doesn't plow it, you deal with it. Um, yeah. Yeah. Well, what, <clears throat> excuse me. But, Once the array is up and running, is there any reason to even access it? Except for once we typically are. We're, uh, we're actually not. We closed the public hearing. So, well, no, but I, I, I know, specifically but, asked him. A, but that's something we can put in a condition or right, something. Okay. Yeah, but we really can't have more give and take. Okay. That's my understanding. The question I have about the town road is, what are like the town specs on it? It's a town road, but it's not maintained in the winter. Right. So, what when someone does want to put a development in, what do they need to do, typically? And this is some form of development, whether it's a house or solar array, whatever. Do they bring it up to the standard uh, that it's abutting to, or do we just gravel it? You know, what's past history on that? I just don't want to see all of us get stuck with something if somebody develops further down all of a sudden that road needs to be brought up to, to a certain grade do we pay for it does the developer pay for it and saying well i'm to, taking care of a piece of property that's not in front of my the road that's not in front of my land i think there should be some rules or something that are concrete so there's no gray area it should be more I, I, and i'm sure the town has faced this and yeah. this isn't the only spot um not that i was involved but you know, my knowledge of past things like that. The town has never really improved the roads in any for anyone. Uh, the applicants have always. Uh, you well, know, I know somebody that did some development on Plain Road, and mm -hmm. they needed to bring it up to code. I believe before they issued building permits, they had to put pavement in, didn't they? Uh, that's true. Well, it, thirty but, years ago, but, what happened with Sand Gully? That's paved now. Okay. Who, who, you know, but, but this is totally different. This, I, well, I, I know it's not like a house job. Yeah. It's the same thing. It's uh, it's some form of development, whether it's a house or whatever. And I'm not speaking against or for it, but I'm just saying we should the town should address this because it's going to keep going on and on. We have a lot of roads that aren't maintained in the winter time, but they're town roads. So mm -hmm. I think the town needs to come up with some definition what they will want to see. Uh, sort of a gray area, and this way there won't be any gray areas. It'll be more concrete. <laughs> I think in the past and, and, and present, the two big things that the town's been concerned with 
is access for, for emergency uh, vehicles and stuff like that. And I, since there's nobody uh, living in those areas, I think that uh, it would be no different than a barn. I mean, say if this solar array should start on fire in the middle of the winter and the road down to it's not uh, plowed, uh, it wouldn't be any different than a, a tobacco barn out there. Well, there the is a barn out there, and probably right. was many barns out there, but I don't remember them, yeah. but I'm sure exactly. there probably was. Yeah. But I'm just saying it's being, it's not agricultural anymore. It's going to a different right. use, and that's all I'm just saying. I yeah. know that you can hear grumbling when someone has to go back onto someone else's frontage and say, okay, I got to improve that road. I'm just saying that maybe it should be done now. I'm not or to tell well, I think, drop yeah. some specs or something. Right now it's pretty, yeah, okay, throw a little gravel down, maybe we'll plow it, maybe we won't. So I'm just saying it should be more concrete. And I'm not just saying for your project, every project. Yeah. Right. So is that, I mean, we had said we wanted, one of the conditions is gonna be to hear from the highway superintendent. So is that, you want to, that should cover. condition that, I mean, I think all we've been saying up to now is that it's in a condition that they'll, that there's, They'll satisfactory with, good enough condition that they'll plow it. They'll work with the highway superintendent yeah. to bring the road up to a condition that they're satisfied with. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You want to go further than that, Roger? Is that, I mean, well, that, I still think it's sort of a gray area, but I'm just saying maybe that's food for thought for whoever makes those decisions. <clears throat> well, I think what I heard was that the superintendent would just not pile the snow right. and then they mm -hmm. take it from there, which right. That, that, would, uh, that was sort of a concern of mine to begin with was, well, how much, you know, are, are we going to be plowing an extra no. 5,000 feet, whatever, right. at, at our expense? And if that's not the case, right. I'm okay with that. Yeah. I mean, he, he, he it's made no, no big deal for him to just not push exactly. the snow. He made no obligation to plow the road. Right. Yeah, but is there an obligation, though, now that there's something out there, some type of structure that they need no. to get to? No. Because, I mean, the, I, I believe the Ostrowskis always have access summer or winter, but the town doesn't maintain that section road, so it's up to them to plow to get mm. to their land. Yeah. You know, they can't call the highway department and say, hey, I can't get to my barn. It's been up to them. Yeah. So it would be the same. So I, do you, you want to say anything? Or, I can. <laughs> you talking to me? Yeah. No, I'm fine. All right. I'm fine. So I just say that this has been, um, you know, thanks for the application and getting back and forth and working with our engineers. I appreciate all the town residents, all the comments, and, um, uh, you know, I, I think we understand what, what we're faced with. The um, town at an annual meeting passed bylaws for uh, extra large scale, large scale, and uh, smaller um, solar arrays because there, there's more and more of them. We didn't have this option, you know, 20 years ago. So, so things are changing. What we're going to be looking at is changing. That's, that's the nature of, of life. Um, um, so I think part of our job as a planning board in town is that, we, you know, we, we, the town has said solar's okay, solar's good, but we want to put some restrictions on it. We want to minimize impacts. That doesn't mean no impact. That means minimize impact. And, um, you know, the view, I think everybody, to me, some people like to look at solar panels, some people don't. So that's a tough shot for me. I got one right outside my window. I look at it every day. Um, a lot of people do. We have a six megawatt one, you know, that I can throw with a stone and reach it. And it's, you know, it's creating power. So that's, that's one thing. And we're going to see more of them. But we should keep in mind that it, you don't want every single field taken by it. Um, and that's something that we can control because we have a site plan. So if we do see that these are starting to pop up too much and it really starts to affect the characteristics of Deerfield, then that's something we, we consider. So I think it's not necessarily that you get one, it means you're going to have two, three, four, a hundred. Um, but again, the, uh, we do have private land ownership in this country, in this town, and I respect that. And um, you know, hearing from the owners, from the owners of the land the last meeting was very powerful to me. Um, and, and I think people should be allowed to do certain things with their property. Um, you know, views get changed all the time that we have no control over. I know that happens everywhere in town. So while I understand and, again, can sympathize with, with the neighbors, um, 
I'm not sure that's enough to, to prevent moving forward on, on proposals that come before us. So at this point, I'd like to make a motion that we, um, we approve the uh, application in front of us for solar array at, um, on Set Right Road as uh, in the application for both the, uh, for all three, the site plan review, the special permit, and the stormwater permit. Uh, very appreciative that the grasses underneath this are gonna be actually beneficial to wildlife and, uh, and pollinators. And so I wanna, uh, we have a list of conditions that we wanna put on this, but I make the motion that we, uh, we approve it. I'll second it. Do we have any other uh, discussion? No. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? I'm going to abstain. Okay. So I'm, for I'm abstaining, John. Why is that? Uh, because I'm abstaining. I don't think I need to state a reason. Um, it, I believe Pat told us that if, if there's anybody that votes against or abstains, we need to notif notice who it was, and that's about it. All right. So just put down that Rogers so four, ab abstained. Four, uh, no, four. John. I am abstaining, but oh. there's, a, there's a reason. Ooh, I didn't see the first meeting. This is a special permit, <coughs> and I did not review the tape. You missed one out of four? Uh, one out of four. And I, you're allowed to miss one, but you need to review the tape from, from that particular meeting because you have three votes. Did you read the? I am going to abstain. Did you read the Mullins rule? This is the way Pat Smith explained it to us the last time that we were, and when it comes to special permit, you can miss one meeting. Right. However, you have to review the tape. I am fully up on this project. However, I didn't submit the documentation into the town hall. So I just think that it's safer that I abstain. So I'm looking on the, at the, So this, is, this was sent to us about attendance by municipal boards, committees, commissions. The members of the board who vote on the plan must have attended the hearings of the plan. The Mullen case involved at most two hearings on a proposed subdivision. At least two Massachusetts trial court judges have refused to apply the Mullen rule in an over... So judges have ruled that in essence that if planning board member misses a meeting when non-substantive issues were discussed, it makes little difference. Furthermore, if a planning board misses a meeting where there may have been substantive, substantive discussion and presentation, but that material was undoubtedly reiterated at a later meeting, which the planning board member did attend, the Mullen rule should not apply. So I think the question is, is if you're up on everything, well, I and believe I am. I believe but every, you have your three votes. I believe I every, think it's uh, safer if I abstain. Well, the question is, do we need three or four votes? It's it's uh, the board is seven, and so to have a majority of the board is four. But we have a majority tonight. Uh, committee or commission when holding an adjunctory hearing shall not be disqualified from voting in a manner solely due to the member's absence from no more than a single session of the hearing in which a testimony or other evidence is received. Uh, before such vote, the member shall certify in writing that he has examined all evidence received on the missed sessions. Again, I've been at all these hearings and it's, it's, I don't think there's, new, there's that much new um, that anybody's missed. And then there's also the written certification. Did one of you do that written certification? Rod, uh, um, Max. Max. He did. Max that was did. on the last. Uh, no. On the, yeah, on on the, the railroad yard one. So you could do that too. It's just to sign something that says uh, you're, you're up on it. Well, yeah, that, if, one, that one is. Yeah, but if you review. It's on, it's done. For, they, they have to resubmit, so that one. But if you reviewed it, you can still fill the paper out to, to assert that you did it. Yeah. I don't think that. Uh, I don't think the fact that you haven't done it to this point is a, you know, if, if, you, if you feel uncomfortable submitting that paperwork, that's a problem. If you don't. No, no, no I don't feel uncomfortable. Well, I then, believe I, I know all information that. You know, then you, then you've met that, and I think you just fill out the paperwork to say that you, you're 
officially saying that you did. Yeah. So I think that would be the way to go because it hasn't, it's not like you've missed substantive arguments here. Okay, as, as long as everybody yeah. feels that way. Okay, yep. then the bombing yes vote. Yeah. Uh, and then as far as Roger goes, I don't think he has to explain it, just that he has to say who he is, who it is that did it, that's all. All right, so it's 401 with mm -hmm. Roger abstaining. Right. So I would like to actually uh, finish, finish the conditions that go along with the motion. Should have done this, actually. So let's do, let's, uh, do, do a vote again. So some of the conditions that we've talked about. Um, so during construction, all local, state, federal laws will be followed, and there'll be no construction on the proposed ways, structures, services on Sunday or federal legal holidays. We're going we're gonna to re-vote. I'm going to read the conditions that we put on the approval. The approval has some conditions on it, and then we'll re-vote. I, I, I went too fast there. So then um, should that last vote be rescinded? Right. So I make a motion that we rescind <laughs> the last vote until the conditions are included. A, a, a friendly motion on my motion, so accepted. Okay. All right. So now we'll... So, now I make a motion to approve this with the following, to approve the uh, site plan special permit um, and stormwater permit for the Set Right Road solar installation project with the following conditions. So all state, local, federal laws are observed regarding noise, vibration, dust, blocking of town roads, um, and that no construction be done uh, on proposed ways, structures, and services on any sun Sunday and legal federal holidays. Uh, violation of any condition contained herein or failure to comply with the site plan shall subject the applicant to a zoning enforcement action in accordance with the GL 40A. Uh, applicant will, shall construct, operate, and maintain a solar renewable energy project which will produce up to two megawatts AC in compliance with the plans entitled and the ones that we looked at tonight which are dated um, November 8th, right? Make sure we get that right date. Uh, these are no November 8th, 2018, yep. by KM. That was the last review. So those are the plans that we're approving. Yeah. <coughs> All material modifications of this solar electric installation made after issuance of the required building permit shall, be a, re shall require approval by the planning board. No permit shall be issued to applicant until all outstanding fees are paid to the town of Deerfield, and we'll figure that out this, this week. It should be an easy one. A copy of the final, de uh, the final commissioning report shall be submitted to the Deerfield Board of Selectmen no less than 30 days prior to the activation of the facility. A pilot agreement between the project developers and the Deerfield uh, Board of Selectmen shall be approved prior to the commencement of the operation of the array. Applicants shall provide a copy of the project summary, electrical schematic, and site plan to the Fire Chief, Highway Superintendent, Emergency Management Director, and identify a responsible owner operator for public inquiries throughout the life of the installation prior to the commencement of the operation of the solar array. Signage shall be attached to the gate providing the emergency contact and information and, and responsible person. That's important. The fire department shall be provided with a means to open the gate on the access road. Um, to the security fencing around the array and shall have access to emergency shutoffs for the solar array. Project developers and site contractors shall provide a training session for the fire department and other town officials on how to use the emergency cutoff switches and other operational details. Applicants shall submit an annual report demonstrating and certifying compliance with the operations and maintenance plan, the requirements of section 3800 and the approved site plan which report shall be submitted to the Select Board, Planning Board, Fire Chief, Emergency Management Director, Building Commissioner, Board of Health and Conservation Commission no less than 45 days after the end of the calendar year. A formal written decommissioning plan shall be prepared, including a provision to allow the town to remove such installations at the owner's expense in accordance with the requirements of Section 3890. If it has not been removed within 150 days of discontinued operations or abandonment, Ooh, only 150 days. All right. That's 20 years from now. Within 60 days of completion of construction of the project, applicants shall submit as-built drawings to the Deerfield Building Commissioner. 
And then pursuant to section 11 of the stormwater regulations for the town of Deerfield, applicants shall certify that the project is in accordance with plan specifications and so shall provide inspections to adequately document compliance upon its receipt and approval of the final inspection and reports and or upon otherwise determining that all work was completed in conformance with the regulations planning board stormwater authority, we will issue a letter certifying completion. Anything else to add to the conditions? So we, those are the things we talked about was the operation and maintenance and fees and the highway, uh, getting the highway superintendent's approval on the road. So that's the motion now before us. Any questions, comments? Oh. Uh, John, you second again? No, you didn't second. What the, has it been? That was my, that was my motion. motion. That was your that motion. Was, that was okay. a long, I'll, I'll a long one. Yeah. Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain. Four zero one. So we will get this printed out. We'll talk to the um, highway superintendent and the about the fees. So hopefully we'll get that tomorrow or the next day. Okay. And then Thank you. and th then we'll get that um, we'll get this written up and signed then for it. Yes, sir. Determination regarding the consideration that the uh, um, the benefit outweighs the burden to the neighborhood and addressing the criteria. So when is that usually issued? Well, this actually what we're going to use is this um, the thing that I read earlier in the, this evening was the um, the Deerfield Planning Board site plan review slash special permit slash stormwater permit report, and that report goes through all of these items and it says met or partially met, and so. Most of them were met. The few partially met were going to. No, no, no. I, th I think that that was the, the criteria for the project itself. This is the uh, criteria for granting the special permit. The uh, consideration of the, uh, the, the six or seven different criteria that you have to make a written determination that the benefit of the project. Uh, I'll just. It says a written determination that the benefits of the proposed use outweigh the detrimental impacts to the town or the neighborhood in view of the particular characteristics of the site and of the proposal in relation to the site, in addition to any criteria set forth in the specific provisions of the bylaw, the determination shall include each of the following, uh, sections 5321 through 5326. Right, so we've got, in addition, okay, uh, 5320 is what, that most of them are grouped under 5320. So here in um, a special permit, may be granted upon written determination by the special permit granting authority that the benefits of the proposed use outweigh its detrimental in impacts on the town and the neighborhood in view of the particular characteristics of the site and the proposal in relation to that site. In addition to the criteria specified in 5320 or elsewhere in the zoning bylaws, such determinations shall include consideration of the following. So we say in the, the use is in harmony with the purpose and intent of this section. 3800, the use will be sited, designed, and operated in a manner that appropriately addresses the impacts of the neighborhood and the community, including visual impacts, environmental impacts, and impacts to public health, safety, and welfare. That's met. No nuisance is expected to be created by the use, and that's met. And then the adequate and appropriate facilities will be provided for proper operations of the solar electric installation. So the only thing we're, there is the road that we're going to I understand how you, you haven't addressed the social, economic, communities which are served by the proposal, the traffic flow, or you addressed this traffic flow, the safety and parking. Mm -hmm. uh, I think you've addressed the, whether or not applicable, but primarily the social, economic, or community needs which are served by the proposal, the neighborhood characteristic and social structures, and the f fiscal impact and whether or not it's adequate. I, we, we had discussions about that, but we, I don't know that we've got a determination from the board that those have been. Um, Considered to the degree necessary to uh, uh, to support the the findings of the deviation granting the special permit. I mean, I, I, that's so what I'm, I'm, just, I'm just curious. It says written documentation. Right. So th that's what I've got here. I, I, I can email it actually to you. So 5321 social, economic, and community needs which are served by the proposal. We feel it was met. 
Applicants have submitted materials demonstrating the following benefits. So we get clean and local energy. Get some revenue. You get some revenue to the town, income to landowner, improved groundwater, agricultural benefit, potential increase in agricultural yield based on increased presence of bees and other pollinators, fostered by pollinator-friendly uh, planter mix planted around the array. No decrease in property value. We believe home values of the surrounding residents are not expected to suffer or fall based on the independent report found in Appendix uh, X2 conducted using a match pair analysis of the impact of solar farms on neighboring rural slash agricultural properties. Then we got 5322, traffic flow safety. Uh, 5323, adequacy of utilities and other public services. 5324, uh, neighborhood character and social structures. The project will support local electricity needs, providing a renewable source of energy to the community. In addition, in addition, the project will benefit and support the community's rural and agricultural nature. A local pollinator mix will be planted around and underneath the panels to foster bees and other pollinator insects, potentially benefiting the agricultural production of more than 400 acres of agricultural land within a mile of the project. So it goes on and on, and I, I email this to you. Um, impacts on the natural environment, again, that, that's met. Potential fiscal impact, including impact on town services, tax base, and employment, that's, that we feel like that's all met, and the pilot uh, payment of lower taxes is, is, is quoted there again. So, so it is written, and we can get that out tomorrow. Thank you. Uh. Thank you, guys. Appreciate your work. Thank you. Thank you to the applicants and to the uh, community residents. We appreciate it. So the other thing on our I'd like to have on the agenda is um, what our next steps are because it's I got some emails today about last week's meeting and um, okay I can tell you what we was it was did the applicants withdrew both the no. site plan and this they they I believe they withdrew they withdrew the everything and they're starting from I don't believe they re well we we were withdrew just withdrew the site plan they withdrew they. They withdrew Drew. asking for a variance because, right. yes. That's right. All right. So that gets back to the fact that we can't really do anything until no. they right. have a variance. Because right. right now it's not allowed there. Right. right. So maybe they didn't withdraw this site plan review, but it's not active, I guess, is what we could Correct. say. Or i got to yeah. find out the right wording for that. Yeah. But it's not, okay. There's nothing we can do about they're, they're, it. It's in limbo until they come back uh, with something else. Because I just want to make sure, because the thing with Priscilla today was, is, is the 90-day thing still in effect? And it can't be if we're not... If it's an illegal I, operation, John, I would almost we were say at that meeting. Yes, and they withdrew the request for a special minute. Right, because they zoning. they the pre zoning. let's call it a pre vote. They you know how how yeah, they're yeah. going to vote, yeah, and yeah. They, they didn't have the they majority. Didn't feel the they had the support. The, so the they no, they had no, they had a majority, but not a super majority. They needed right? a super majority. Yeah, and if they continued, and if they got a negative determination. They couldn't come back for couldn't two years, back, so, yeah. they, so they withdrew, and now they might be coming back with something else, which if they do... I guess my question was, they didn't withdraw because the planning board was there also. No, the planning board... We had a meeting that night, so they didn't withdraw their we, request for we, site plan review. We discussed and made a recommendation, and quite frankly, the Zoning Board of Appeals did the right thing they stood to the bylaws and yeah. you know well, that's your well opinion, we so. we closed we we voted and it, we closed well, it, it was in direct conflict with so you know we should and i brought this up several times in the last two years that we need in in my opinion revisit the solar i mean we're the two two biggies the 100 foot setback um could that be could that be a positive? Is it is it is it keeping solar arrays in areas where it might not be the best place? You know that's arguable. Maybe it is. Maybe it isn't. Well, um, I think as far I, as the large scale, I was solar, I was kind of rather than being a variance, maybe it should be a special permit. Well, I think a couple of things. The the first thing is I I like the fact that you know the way a ZBA is set up and that um, when the ZBA you know. One opinion is that, well, they did, they stuck to the bylaws, but their whole job is one rule doesn't fit all. And when you had the support of the neighbors thinking this is the best of the things, and that you look at the other butters, you know, where they wanted to be close was the railroad yard and all that, and the type of land that it was being put on, 
I think that you should have greater uh, variance or leeway with your decision, not just, well, this is the bylaw, well, so we have yeah, to stick that, to it. That's yeah, the well, first, before that's you go any further, criteria we should, for, for the um, right. For the variance, is it is it is it in direct conflict with the bylaw? And the yeah. answer is yes, yes to that. So that's why, when it comes to the solar stuff, we need we need to revisit it and right. and you know it, it maybe it should be special permit versus a versus well, a no. Another thing, way that we could look at too, and, and I don't know if you guys remember, but at the tail end of the um, large solar field up by Johns, they were going for the maximum. It was a six megawatt. Well, because of technology, they said, well, we can make this almost seven. But, you know, we didn't really get into it too much because we, no, we said didn't. no. And the state said, well, the biggest you can have six. So they reduced the number of panels. Right. And I think that is a better, something that we should look at, not necessarily how much power it produces, but how much area it takes up. Right. Well, and, it's and both. We, we it is both. Before, before. Yeah. 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 But if, 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 we, if someone was to come in and they were going to put up 10 acres, it shouldn't be a concern of ours if it's five megawatts or a hundred megawatts, right? Because of oh, technology. I see. I, I, yeah, I, I, that's true. I, I see what you're saying, Kip. And you're yeah. right. It yeah. should be not on the power. It be it the should area be area takes up. What are people going to see? This technology could change. Right. Exactly. Yeah. We but we actually on uh, just for the record we 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 voted to recommend um, from this planning board's uh, point of view right. my, the project my, my and so exactly so we're done we closed the eating and we, we were done that at the end I of that, mean, that that evening as far as we we're concerned so that was me talking as a planning board member right. not a ZBA member right. you know we right. should defer to the neighbors because this is something that's going to tie that property up for 20 20 plus years you know it's arguable what panels and 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 uh windmills i mean when i see this stuff i see the majesty of what human intuition has done mm -hmm. and you know other people not so much sometimes um but that railroad site once those panels are up the, the site will be clean new plantings mm -hmm. it, 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 it's never it's not and it'll never be agricultural it, it'll no. never, it'll no. never no. be it they won't yeah. have looked no. that good for the last hundred years yeah, yeah. Um, and and, and, and did, the residents weren't really concerned with no. the appearance. It was more of it's the noise. noise because because well, they, they, trees. well, it started right, off with that. appearance. And I thought they were going to try to prove that no. to the residents. Well, they, I was a little shocked that it went the way it did. Well, they, they, no, they, they came back and said that they didn't have any more objections. Right. That somebody had satisfied them right. as that these were there were no more problems in their opinion. So what are they going to come back anything. with? What are they going to come back to the ZBA? We'll find that out. Well, they're probably going to come back to us first. I think I well, I don't know. I think why. they're going to have a revised plan. Oh, okay. I, I can't revise so it. They're coming in with a revised plan to skip the zoning board. They're going to have to meet the setbacks. Right, and right. if they do that, that'll upset me no, a bit. They have to go to the ZBA. It's not allowed there. Period. Oh, that's not true. Oh, it this, isn't. Yeah, they're looking oh, for two, two variances. Well, setbacks One is to allow it. No, but if they the shrink the size of the system, they're going to shrink the size of the system. Oh, if it was as small as allowed. If it's two megawatts like this one here, then it's allowed. I, I, is that industrial land? No, it's no, commercial. It's commercial. commercial. Yeah, C two, I think. If it was industrial, then they wouldn't have needed that variance. However, if they do that, I would be highly disappointed because all along they were saying we couldn't. I know they do kept that. That will sour. Me. Well, but you know, it, so it, extra it, large is a but, no. But answer me this: yeah, what, a special permit what happens if ten years from now the the panels that are on an existing site could be replaced and double the output of the thing? Do they come back to us to just change a panel? Well, yes, they would have to because... Well, I don't see why. I don't because, know why. No, I wonder. Because we'll a special wonder. permit, like, for instance, oh. this one we just talked about, it's it's for uh, two megawatts AC. Right. right, that's the only reason they'd have to come back. Because right. Because we're restricted because of the power. Oh, right. And that's I, I they, like the little loophole that they got with the AC versus the DC. I know. We gave them, <laughs> they got a break on that. Well, well, you you, have, to, you have to, because you don't specify. But, you know, getting back to what you said, John, where they said that it wasn't affordable for them, but yet these people did a two megawatts, and it's affordable for them. So. But, well, because of the infrastructure, and, um, and I get that, they um, the infrastructure upgrades that they have to do. I mean, like, for, for these people yeah. here, the... Uh, Hexagon, sure. that's that's a huge investment to carry all that three phase. Under. Oh yeah. So, 
you know, it's it's not just put your panels up and oh, yeah, full yeah. throttle. Well, yeah. there's going to be three phase out there, isn't there, John? Or it stops? Well, I think on once once it goes out to one sixteen, but that that's a huge upgrade. And I think no, at no, the no, railroad, I'm talking it's about the railroad. Even, I think it's the railroad's got to have. Three phases. You would think so, right? right. But, but they I'm might not quite it might sure go down that. McCullen Farm Road, so it doesn't come up. And, I think know, that they road. they probably have to go all the way to True Court well, uh, to Route Five. To, well, to I, get the, I would think like. Kip just said, I'm sure there's three phase up to McCullen Farm. It's split someplace because I'm sure they, the railroad has three phase. Well, the other thing that you kind of wonder in the back of your mind is their landlord is the right. state of Massachusetts. Right. Well, no, not where the panels are going. Is that Pan Am? Yeah, that's Pan Am. Pan Am's. But with the deal with them, I would not be surprised at some point to see the state come in and do that. Oh, I see. On like, some of their property, like they're doing. Well, they'll they'll take over that as well and do that. Well, they'd have to buy it from Pan Am. They already. Yeah, all I know is what's inside. Okay, you know we're we're, we're kind of going far astray from what John started. Yeah, here. Right. Do do we want to say that we have closed the meeting and that we did everything we're going to do and we're out of it? So or do you, I just wait, wait a minute, John. Yeah, you had a question about well, yeah, the so ninety we, days, and we just need to say, do we believe that we've covered that base? And can we say to Priscilla, we we closed our meeting. We decided that we would we would agree to what they want to do, and it goes to the, the zoning board. We That's are it. done with those plans that were submitted and voted on by the ZBA. We completed our actions on our, our action is complete. Okay, on that. that's all they needed. And we should take a vote. On we that. should vote on that. Vote on what? Well, didn't you vote, vote on it? We vote on it that night. We did not. Well, we, did vote, we made we a recommendation, to, to but recommend we never, them, we but never we voted. Need to do that beyond that, if we don't, if, if I don't think board, we have to take any action, do we? I don't think we do either, because the public hearing was closed. Public we public. can't vote on it because well, we took the actions and said we, we as the planning board say it's okay. They went after it, came over no, here because no. they wanted us. to It had first. to come back to us, right? But well, you think it does? Yes, but. Because we didn't say it's okay, we recommended it. We recommended it, right? Yes, we didn't approve anything. No, not at all. But because and we they did, the, the planning board public hearing was closed. Well, yes. or the, the planning board public, public hearing, hearing was closed. But well, then yet, I don't think we decision. closed. I think it's still we did open. make a decision. No, no, no. The, the the planning board public hearing is closed because I I told Rachel. I said Rachel. You so you closed close. it the night of that meeting. Yes, right. I wasn't there, so I oh, wouldn't okay. know that, John. That that is absolutely closed. The public yeah. hearing, but then you. When you close, you're supposed to make a we decision. Voted. We no, it. we made a recommendation. We couldn't make a decision until ZBA gave it a, a, variance, a, a variance. So now you're waiting for them. Well, they, the applicant withdrew everything. And then the applicant so, withdrew. so by default, it just it, oh, I see. it disappeared. Because we're waiting for ZBA, and ZBA is not going to make a decision. Because they withdrew. So. I, but to all of your points, I think that we could not approve it because it didn't meet that. And since the ZBA. Uh, or the applicants withdrew that, I think that we should take a vote to uh, not approve because otherwise it's out there. I know. Then what happens okay, to their... Okay, no, okay, you know? that makes sense. What I'd happens like, to uh, them... I'd like to make a motion. Wait, 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 wait. wait. Just a minute. What happens to them if we reject them now? I mean, what have we done to them? The Nothing. same they, thing that would have happened if they voted by the zoning boards would have voted? No, because it's different. So they could come back tomorrow and apply again with a different plan. Or the same plan with alterations. Right? That that plan that they brought in is 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 dead right now. That specific date is so plan. I maintain. Why do we need to vote on anything else beyond that? I don't no. understand. Because if the the board, the planning board, did not make a decision on it, so you know, to what Priscilla was saying, the 90 days pass is automatically approved. I don't think that they can go forward with it because it doesn't meet. The zoning bylaws, and they did not get our, um, relief from the ZBA. Right. But I think to end our part of it, that if we take a, a vote to yeah, I think not approve it because yeah. it didn't meet our bylaws, the setback requirements, that would be the adequate way. Otherwise, if we don't vote on it, then we just didn't do anything. It's just out there. It's just yeah. out there. So I, so I, 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 I guess I um, worth it. Yeah. And I, one, one of the things that I've not, I've been to a couple of planning seminars and also talking with town council about different things with the select board that you know we all can talk about something and we all can agree on it, but until we vote on it, it's right. not a done oh, deal. Oh no, so. you're absolutely right. It, it, it needs to have a legal vote. 
Ну вот все. Can you make it smaller? <laughs> well, no. So, that's more than that. Well, I would make a, a very simple motion that um, the uh, that we deny the site plan for. Uh, no, one, this one. Sorry, I got both of them open. The site plan um, for the uh, property owners um, on. It's it's a river, river road uh, from river Pan Am road. Southern. So if we uh, say because, because of the, zoning board the, actions, we have to deny because them. it does because not meet our bylaws. bylaws. Therefore, we yeah. reject okay. the plan. I'll second that motion. Okay, wait. So let me just let's write that down, John. And now, when they come in with something and else, it start, the clock starts again. It's a yeah. new deal. To reject. You don't say reject. Um, okay. What do you say? Deny. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Deny um, site plan. Submission. For um, bylaw, bylaw, um, or per bylaw conditions. Be because it doesn't meet our, our town bylaws. Submission. They call it. This is what they call it officially, the Mass RE12. That's the official. Okay, now you're changing some more of it. We get, can we get this and then put That's that in the there? Name That's the name I of know. the project. I know. I, I okay. thought you wanted to write the name of the project. Well, the site plan submission of, of okay, I see what you're saying. Mass RE12. Yeah. Mass RE12. Deerfield Solar. Deerfield Solar. Um, and the reason doesn't meet zoning. Doesn't need zoning. Setback requirements in the scale of the project is too large. Setback zoning. requirements. Well, no, actually, nothing to do with the setback. It has to do with it's not allowed in that. Uh, zoning oh, is not allowed. I was just going to bring that up because Kip said there's two things. It's it not allowed. And, and well, they were looking for relief for setback but, as well. And, and but, the, but if it's not allowed, that's, right, allowed. Right, right. that's, that's right. Right. Yep. bigger than the setbacks. Just because because it doesn't meet zoning requirements. Right. That's period. Okay. Zoning requirements. All right. Yeah. So let me just read that back because I'll type that up that way. Yeah, that's good. Um, <clears throat> John Bronis moves to deny the site plan submission of mass re12 deerfield solar because it doesn't meet the zoning Deer, deerfield zoning, deerfield zoning. Yeah. period okay kip seconded kip seconded it yes. okay kip second any discussion no. all those in favor of denying aye 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 opposed abstain five zero zero see and the other reason to make some of these Things and it doesn't matter whether it's solar or, or something else. A special permit versus, versus the variance because the variance is forever. A special permit is a specific mm -hmm. um, to the to the person that's doing to, it. The, or the entity right, that's doing it, it. It, it, it's not forever. It's mm -hmm. you know once you have a variance, so it's forever. Yeah. So what I wanted to point out is for that solar for the railroad yard, they were asking for 2.7 megawatt of direct DC. Yeah, so that would have meant they could, which is actually close to two. AC. Uh, it'd be about, what do you got to lose? About 10%. So They said that their 2 AC is about 2.6 DC. So it's almost, they just have to drop this a little bit and they could well, Maybe you should let them know that. Maybe I that's what they, they figured out. I think maybe they figured that out. They might have figured that out because they might have thought we were talking DC and then when this discussion came that we didn't mention AC or DC so they can take their pick which one they want to use. And they, they'll meet the setbacks? No, they still have, we can, but the special permit can determine the setbacks. If they drop that back to like 2.5. We can grant that, the setbacks? It comes under special permit. The setback right now requires 100 feet. Right. If they want less than that, then so we have to. They don't need to go to the zoning board. Right. We could, we could because, grant that. Because all, all the special permit for solar is us. Yeah. So that does make it easier. So if they just made it a little bit smaller, maybe they figured that out. That's interesting. Well, yeah, I think they—I think they decided that they were going to try to come back. They, 
they, they had nothing to lose by, by redrawing. Yeah. Uh, everything to gain, if there was any, anything to gain was by withdrawing. Yeah. Otherwise, they were just out of it for two years, regardless. Now, what not happens necessarily. if the they just can't go back to get zoning board. better and more efficient, and these people start pumping out more than? Well, that's why I think what you said is I, we I honestly, do our bylaws yeah. to say size. It should be D C. What it, what the panels well, are putting No, out. no, no. I think we should take out all the D C A C requirements right. and just it make it be. open. Yeah. I mean, there's no how much area we're just concerned about up. whether the panels are too big or too small or what the panels are. So greater physical. than 10 acres or, or less than five acres or. Right. Yeah. And leave no, that. Yeah, that. Yeah. I'd, I'd take out the, the thing because it's a floating number now. I think that the 10 acres that comes from. Is that, that's not from our because they had to keep it under 10 acres. That's not from ours, is it? Our bylaw because ours is. Specific with uh, DC current and they, or no, I think it's, it's ours because they made a big issue of it on this one because yeah. whether it's within the fenced now? area no, or the I panels, get, blah blah blah. Do we have anything else that we need to? So um, the other day, the Deerfield Planning Board got a application for a site for a special permit and site plan review from Berkshire, from um, Sun Mass Inc. Now what's this here? That's, I, I is this a new interest. one? Is this a new? Um, Do you have, a, have others or just those? What's the mass ink? That's, That's a pot place. Pot place. Oh, I There's was thinking books it sounds like solar to me again. Yeah. 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 There's not enough books for. There's not enough of these for everybody. But there's one of these. Right. Do you want to take one home or? You want to take one? Of these? No. All right. Otherwise, you leave it in the box here. Um, so I asked. I said. Are you we, shutting us off? Okay. I said we didn't want to put it on tonight's agenda, but we wanted to talk about it and say, are we ready to take this on, and should we set some dates? Um, so that's that's basically our task is to set some dates. So I believe this is a uh, proposed marijuana cultivation facility at 198 Mill Village Road in Deerfield. The site is currently occupied by Pioneer Gardens, uh, which will continue to be a fixture in Deerfield as they reinvest in other locations. So. It's a, our, it's our first one based on the new bylaw that we just passed a year or two ago at annual meeting. Because, because this oh. is just a grow, they don't need to go in front of the selectmen and, and do this community. Oh yeah, they've already done that. Oh, they have? Okay. They've done their outreach and everything. So I would suggest that we all spend a little extra time reading some of this stuff because it's, 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 well, seeing it's big and it might not be the- in another two or three weeks, maybe we can does this, does this have a time frame on it? So, so right now, well, I think 90 days, uh, and it was received November 13th, so it was just received. Um, so we have to start uh, going through it. So right now we're scheduled to meet on December 10th, and the only thing on that agenda is um, Dollar General. And they're either make or break it. So I, normally we would have met the first Monday, but that's a... Town, special town meeting, right? That's still on, Kip? Yes. So we scheduled for December 10th, which could be a, um, at seven o'clock. And as we know, those Dollar General meetings sometimes can go on, but as a facilitator, I can try to keep it shorter. Well, it could be very short. Um, so well, didn't, didn't we pretty much ask him to come in with the changes that we requested or, yeah, or, or else it was done? Didn't yeah, we do that? I think that's what we told him. I, and then, you, you know, then you get into December and then it's going to be hard to find a meeting in the third and fourth week of December. So I, I guess we should put it, tack it on to the end of that. Yeah, I think you're right. I mean, nobody's going to, during the holidays, nobody's going to. Yeah, at, least, at least get it started. Tack it on the end of what? Uh, on the, December 10th, put it on well, the. That's agenda. what the meeting's for. The no, it oh, is. this this. Year. No, I'm saying I'm saying put this. Oh, one. I'm sorry. Okay, all right. Do you want to start sooner then, so you've got plenty? Of well, time. we already posted it for seven o'clock. I don't want to be messing, so I think we okay. just. Okay, all right. If we do an hour and a half at Dollar General and then we do an hour of this, I think that's a. Well, good we have thing. enough time to post it, John. So we could start it early. It's not like you know, we, that's. It's more than two weeks away. Yeah. Uh, so which would we? Which would we? Um, I would think, well, I, I sort of agree with Paul. I think we should probably start earlier. This, we'll be here to start this one, though, or the other one? 
Well, we can't. Well, yeah, I guess we can't. You, I, you can do whatever. One of them we should Aren't start we post earlier. This one? You start this and just go through it. Look for it at six. At six. And, uh, then we'll just and then continue it if we need to Actually, or whatever uh, needs to happen. And this one requires the, the mailing and everything too. So this one they do need two weeks. So they do we have two weeks for them to do it? Um, till December tenth. Yeah, we've got we've got three weeks. I think. Or the, close the, to three weeks. Anyway. Like, I was going to say, is, the 20th, if right? the meetings continue to have as they have been, the Dollar General is going to draw a lot more uh, people, townspeople. So, mm. do we want to put that last, or do we want to put that first? Because they'll have to be here longer and stay through. Well, it, but so. no matter what, this isn't a ten-minute. No, I, I know it, John, here, but so. I'm probably not that many people are going to come to this. Mm. <laughs> the marijuana thing, but maybe it's the first one. I don't know. Yeah. I could be wrong. In Northampton, they said the up mayor's a coming. A no. dozen <laughs> porta parties outside this place. But that's <laughs> they're selling as a dispensary. I, I so I, I I think that's a wise thing is to say uh, six o'clock um, to open this for okay. a public hearing. So post and it's the first one. So I think we can cut it off after an hour because mostly we're just getting a feel for it. We'll get an overview yeah, from the applicant. We'll hear from a couple neighbors and then we'll decide. If we want to hire technical review people, that's basically what we do at the first meeting. Post public yeah, hearing. Let's do that. For yeah. six. Yeah, as long as you cut it off. I mean, that's, that's where I know. We're, we're faulting is not cutting things. I'll off. have the applicants come prepared with a 15-minute presentation, take some questions, then figure out our next, our next. Uh, yeah. Well, let's let's and let's have a Yankee swap in the middle of this too, since it's Christmas time. Just kidding. Just kidding. All right. Are you taking this? No, this is, there's enough of these for everybody, so I might, I'm going to take a copy of this thing. Oh. Is that just a map, John, or what is It's the no, plans, plans, like those plans, plans they put up there. They got maps here, they got the, you know, we're basically talking where the greenhouses are up at Pioneer yeah. Gardens is what we're talking about. Well, if you've got enough, give me one off. I thought it was just How many of those have you got? We got tons of maps. We only have. Uh, well, where's the? Oh, I'll take another. This is just a map. That's. What that's. I have. Oh, sorry. That's just the map. The plan. Yeah. This thing is. Oh, it's just a map. Yeah. It's a plan. It's the plans. It's, it's, the, plans. it's the plans. It's, it's the whole plan. plans for building. It's not this. Yeah. Well, I want the verbiage. Oh. Okay. You want this thing here? Yeah. All right. I'll get another one. Somebody can get me one. Okay. Is that all right? Yeah. All right. Thank you, Paul. You're welcome. All right. So that's that plan, and then we were just supposed to be informed that. Um, So that's over with. Now we're onto something else. And we're onto something else. This is mail. It says this doesn't require action by the board. Just acknowledge the receipt of it. It's from Savage Farms Inc. to the planning to the select board that they purchase land that's under Chapter 61A. Um, we now we now plan to sell that land and desire to remove it from 61A. So the town gets first gets dibs on it if they want, right? So this is just acknowledgement that the planning board knows about this. It's um, do you know where it is, Kip? Or have yeah, you seen it? It's on Wells Crossroad. Maybe we should put a senior center there. <laughs> Which doesn't even uh, and bust them in and out of there. <laughs> okay, Savage Farm noticed the planning board that they plan to remove property from 61A. Is that what yeah, it is? Yeah, on Wells Crossroad. From. 61A on um, no, Wells. I don't believe so. It it's behind Crossroad. It's behind the old Gripco house. Right. I know that they came in and they did an A and R. Uh, yeah. So John, does that who who's the one that has to be who makes that decision for the town? Select board. Select, select, select board. board. Okay. So it's just and, we're uh, just mentioning it with really yeah, no, and I guess no bearing on what we're doing. No, I guess the select okay. board could ask if we had an opinion, we could give it to them. Is that yep. where they were going to? Like a road, pioneer. Well, they did some. They did some A and R work there as you recently right, well, week for them. Yeah, it's the, our work is complete on that. It's yeah. Uh, it's not far from Pioneer Gardens, but it's not okay. I think they withdrew that kip that road thing. Part yeah. of it, part of it, just yeah. one little part of it. The rest of it, that we they went through with. Right, they did the A and R, but they did. Mm -hmm. the, they were going to do a road for Pioneer to get to some of the um, land. Kip, how is that when they when somebody withdraws it from 61A? How they, they pay go back it. what five years for property taxes? Yes. And so is that um, based on what the property tax would have been year five, year four, year three? Is there interest added on to that, which there should be interest there is. added on? There is. 
five percent. So year year five would be whatever that tax burden would be. Yes. I, th I think there's like a renewal period, and if you do it at the renewal period, they don't go back. But if you try to pull it out before that renewal period's up, they have to. Well, go no, because every year is a renewal period. Right. Oh, is it? Yes. I thought there was like a ten-year thing. No, every year is a renewal okay. period, and they they go back. The only time that they won't go back uh, five years is if you, it hasn't been in the chapter program five years. So in other words, if you have five acres of land and you put it in this year, in two years from now you decide you want to sell and take it out, you only pay back taxes for the two years that it was in. Uh, where the five years comes into play is if it's been in for ten years or more, yeah. you only pay for five. Yeah, they don't go back the whole time. They just right, so if you've had your property in for 30 plus years, you know, it, it was beneficial for you to, sure. to do it. If it's a short term thing, it's not because you end up paying the interest right. on top of the tax. Yeah. So that's, so that's who, made those, who made those copies of the, the, the wording for the, the other one, by the way? All for right, this, so we, who made these? The applicant. Okay. So we have our last, uh, our next meeting set. Um, six so December 10th, 10. 6 o'clock, we'll do um, 198 Mill Village. 7 o'clock, we'll keep Dollar General. I was reading some data today. The uh, to hear from these cost people. of a pound of marijuana has dropped from $2,500 out west down to somewhere in the 750, 500 to 750 range. Mm. So what they're finding out there is when you're taxing on a dollar basis versus a by weight basis, the, the, this income that was supposed to be have brought to the communities really is virtually non-existent. <laughs> As well as every dollar taken in, there's about 450 that goes out. So it's turning out to be a negative, net negative versus net gain. So. So you'll get. So that. So we made two decisions tonight. You'll type them up, and I'll. Well, I'm going to have to go over that with Pat or well, somebody because that's. If, if you, yeah, if you, we just. Yeah. You and I sent it to her, and she'll make it into the pretty thing. But all okay. the written comments, and, and as he said, we should release it as soon as we can. So okay. hopefully she's around. I'm going to leave a hole for that, for her writing it in, and I'll put the rest of it down as a minutes. I can do Great. that, no problem. This and I have minutes from the thing. last meeting, too. That's for the uh, set right solar thing. And, yeah. then, yep. and then he's got the sentence for the railroad yard solar thing, which is yep. a lot quicker. And we never hired um, – we, we hired – with the, with the Conservation Commission, we hired GRZ to do stormwater, but they didn't they didn't do a lot. But they'll bill they'll bill the applicant for that. So we don't. For the You're talking right? about the railroad. The railroad. Yeah. yeah. We, we, oh. we had, we had uh, them do a little bit of a stormwater stuff for thing us. For yeah. Us. So they need Remember to. Remember, we reported that a little mm -hmm. bit in the last mm -hmm. meeting, but so, and that might still come back to us. So. All right. Any other uh, business? I don't see any other. Do we have all our stuff we need for Dollar General, John? So, um, Diane Schindler in the office has a, a box, and she's keeping up with that. We've received lots more letters from people. Um, we know, we were pretty clear at the last meeting what we would need. Right. Boom, 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 boom. Um, and I'm at the point where whatever they present us, well, no I, more I, comment, I know we make that, a decision. John, so, yeah. But I, because they propose maybe even putting a new road out onto set right, and they might come. You mean Mill Village? Mill yeah. Village. Uh, they might come out with that. So I think we should have our highway superintendent weigh in on the curb cut on 5 and 10 and on possibly on Mill Village. And I don't think we heard anything on any safety issues there from any public official. Something came up at, uh, at the last meeting well, on the safety saying recommending that a road be that entry be put on to Mill Village. Right, well, that's why I'm saying. A, a resident recommended that. The I know, but they not. said they would, they thought about it, so they might bring that in. So let's have, let's have somebody weigh in on it so we can say, yes, we had our highway superintendent or whoever's going to look at it, say, yes, they looked at it and it's a, a good spot, a bad spot, whatever they come up with. So we've hired 
Tyne Bond to do the review. They did the review based on the plans they got, so they did a traffic analysis on 5 and 10. If they now come in with another proposal saying entrance or exit on Mill Village, then I think we would have a traffic engineer do it, not just our DP, not just our highway superintendent. Well, the, That's, the thing yeah. about it is, and I could be off, but I don't believe so after having a lot of conversations, uh, our highway superintendent is more focused on the condition of the road and drainage stuff. Not necessarily access safety, yeah. or something that, that you know. That's more the police department. Um, and when it comes to Route Five, well, and 10, we should get a here uh, right. something we, from both. We, of those we places. should, but right. I was, what I'm saying, and I said this earlier, is that we can only do it on a proposal. We don't. Right. It's not a hypothetical. I don't we can't think do it we even got a, a proposal on the curb cut on Five and Ten. And I know we did that. We got that when Cumbies went in. What do you mean? Because it was a new one. The, the one that they're using now is, a, is one that was approved by, D, by uh, Mass Dot years ago. Yep. So it's a little different. You, so yeah. that's why yeah, we had Mass a traffic Dot engineer do it. Curb cut in a long time ago. What's that? Mass Dot put that curb cut that they cut the trees around. Yeah. They put that they're in claiming, there years ago. They're claiming that it isn't really even a curb cut yes, at one of the meetings. No. Mm -hmm. I think the state already did do that. Yeah. That, that, was, that was already approved. Yeah. It was never actually, it was never withdrawn, you know, the trees were a separate issue from that. I know the trees were a separate I, issue, but... I believe Citizens for Sustainable Development is pursuing MassDOT to question that, but right now the applicant says that they have it right away. That's the difference between what a, a community resident says and what the applicant says as a whole, and we review the application. We got to double check and it. what's in reality. We got to double check it, you know. <laughs> yeah. But I guess I'm just having a hard time, Roger, because right now we wouldn't know where the road was. So how do you get, how do you ask someone to review something if it's a hypothetical? Well, I guess you could look at their frontage, John, and you could say anywhere in that area, would there, would there be a place well, that a front would be acceptable or not, I guess. That's how I would look at it. Yep. So ask away. Please. Ask both of uh, I would think we're coming from the... the no, I, I don't, everything should not come from the chair now, because I don't do... I don't do as much as I, I wish I could. So I would ask you to please, um, ask the police chief and the highway superintendent to weigh in. That we'll ask Priscilla to write them a letter. No, she's not. It's not happening anything to her. If you, don't, if you ask, it's no. going to happen. If you don't ask, then it might not happen. You can go ask her, but I don't think you're going to get anywhere with her. It's not get well, with her. How come she won't do that? Because she's not paid full time. She's got so much work to do. Yeah. And that's why we've had to go in. I went in on Set Right Road, and that's why Rachel went in on the railroad yard because we had to do all the work that she, she would have done normally. Well, what people don't realize is I sent out the letters to all the, the people to do the peer review and then, and then had to um, write that up and had Pat Smith actually did the, did the responses. So, and she just won't do it because she's not being paid. Well, yeah, if she doesn't have enough time, I can understand that. Yeah, she only works 20 hours a week. Actually, she works about 25 hours a week, but she's only paid for 20. Yeah. Really? Wow. And she's doing all the inspection stuff and all she that. She does everything for she the She did everything for the inspection the department and all that. The conservation commission, the planning department. I knew she had multiple hats, but I didn't know. So I that's why it would be great if time. you could follow up on that, Roger. We'd really appreciate that. And with that said, it's 9 p.m. Do you want to make a I would like to make a motion. Do you know where your close spouses are? I second to close to adjourn the meeting. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Who, who moved it? John and John.